All right, good morning, guys. You guys should finish up the do not question. Uh, briefly describe in your own words uh, 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 what you guys took away from that previous unit. Or more importantly, the uh, research paper you guys ended up doing. Or some of you guys chose to do the presentation option. You know, one thing that you really took out of it, something that you learned that was new, something that, you know, hey, I remember nothing else about this unit, you know, way, way down the road, hey, this is something I'm going to remember. So let's kind of broad to whatever you guys have to make sure it's about 45 sentences to get it written down. So this next unit is going to be all about learning and then eventually memory. We're going to kind of combine the two. So uh, we're going to be discussing, okay, how our brains retain information. How do we learn something new? Why is it easier for some people to learn other things and, you know, other people it's not so easy? You know, why is it, you know, hey, I'm more of a visual learner. Hey, I'm more of a, you know, you write stuff down or you talk to me or show me, you know, hands-on type learner. You know, we're going to kind of discuss uh, those different processes and why some people are, you know, the way they are. So, starting off, we're going to be discussing something called classical conditioning and a guy by the name of Pavlov in here in just a minute. So, this first part, uh, we're going to get down uh, in our notes and hopefully by the end of it, this first uh, explanation or definition will make a little bit more sense. So, classical conditioning. A learning process in which a neutral stimulus becomes associated with a meaningful stimulus and acquires the capacity to elicit a similar response. So let's take a quick second to kind of break this down. A learning process in which a neutral stimulus, meaning that, you know, a neutral, like, uh, flash of light or sound or something, something that uh, has nothing to do with me, it's completely random, becomes associated with a meaningful stimulus. So something that has meaning, if I say, hey, uh, oh, if I see a light turn on in the kitchen, that means that somebody is there, as opposed to, oh, it's just a light turning on in the kitchen. You know, it means nothing. It stops there. And then acquires the capacity to elicit the similar response. So like I said, here in just a minute, hopefully this will make a little bit more sense when we get into the example of Pavlov's dog. So, a guy by the name of Pavlov essentially wanted to try to train his dog to react a certain way when he brought in a certain stimulus. We wanted to, he wanted to try to, in a way, almost manipulate the dog. Just try to see if he could train it to do something. And so, uh, his experiment included him trying to get the, ball, the dog to react to a sound of a bell. Uh, when he would, you know, uh, so that the dog would learn, hey, when the bell rings, uh, that means it's time to eat. And more importantly, you know, when he would ring the bell, he was trying to get the dog to, you know, basically start drooling like he would when he knew food was coming. So... I'm going to walk through this step by step and feel free to pause and go back if you kind of miss something. Uh, one important thing to note, uh, next to each of these I have abbreviations, unconditioned stimulus, US, and so on and so forth. It's just so that we don't have to write it out every single time and hopefully it saves a little bit of time and effort. So just keep that in mind going forward. So first off, unconditioned stimulus. A stimulus that produces a response without prior learning. So going back to Pavlov's example in his experiment, uh, his unconditioned stimulus was the dog poop. Because the dog doesn't have to be taught to drool when it has food presented to him. Now, I bring him food, the dog just sits there and drools. I don't have to train him to do that. It means if it's unconditioned, that means it's like it's untrained. It's not learned. Uh, nobody, I didn't have to teach the dog to do that. So, keep that in mind. Then we have an unconditioned response. So, once again, unconditioned. It's unlearned. It just happens. It's not, I don't have to teach him anything. So, unconditioned response, the unlearned reaction that is automatically caused by the U.S., or the unconditioned stimulus. So, breaking that down a little bit. So, the unlearned reaction that is automatically caused by this. So, what reaction would the dog automatically uh, have to the U.S., or the dog food? And down here, the dog begins to drool because of the food. So, once again... Neither one of these we had to teach. Once, if we present him with a food, it just happens. We don't have to train him to do that. He just naturally does it. So once again, if you think of unconditioned, if you need to, in your mind, swap it out for unlearned or untaught, and you'll get the right uh, conclusion. So, hopefully you're with me so far. Unconditioned stimulus, dog food. Conditioned stimulus, uh, the dog drooling because of the food. So now we get to the second part of this. So now that we have everything that has been has been unconditioned, I mean, I don't have to teach him anything, now we're going to get to the point where, okay, I'm trying to teach him something. So next up, we have something called the conditioned stimulus. 
or you know the learned uh, stimulus. The uh, I have to teach him to respond to this stimulus, to this uh, bell, or whatever the stimulus may be in a different experiment. So a previously neutral stimulus, so before it had no meaning to the dog. The bell, no meaning. You just heard the bell, and that's it. Nothing, nothing after that. A previously neutral stimulus that causes a conditioned response after being paired with the unconditioned response. So I'm pairing the two together. That means I'm every time when I have the unconditioned uh, stimulus, I'm uh, pairing that with the bell. So I bring out the food or the unconditioned stimulus and I ring the bell at the same time. So you know the, the dog starts to associate one with the other. He hears the bell, he thinks food. Because if you bring them out together, I'm sorry, if you ring the bell while you bring food, you know, in his brain he's like, okay, he's making that connection. Brain, uh, food, bell, bell, food, and so on and so forth. So once again, the conditioned stimulus or what I have to teach him to respond to is this bell ring. And then, finally, we get to the conditioned response, which is what I'm trying to get him to do. So the conditioned response with the CR, or the learned response to the CS up here, or the learned response to the bell. So I'm trying to get him to respond to that bell. The learned response to the CS that occurs after the CS and the US are paired. So let me break that down one more time. He's trying to get him to, to drool. I'm trying to get that response from him by ringing the bell, the conditioned stimulus. And so I can only do that. I can only get him to drool when the bell rings if, I'm sorry, after I pair the CS and US, or after I pair the bell and the food. So after I pair the bell and the food, I bring the food out and ring the bell. I do that for a long time, you know, days, weeks, months, wherever it may be. After a while, he's going to be conditioned to respond to that bell ringing. Down here, the dog drool when it hears the bell because he associates that with the food. So I've taught this dog to essentially drool whenever he hears that bell ring. And so later on, when he went to test this, he would then, okay, start ringing the bell, but he wouldn't bring the food. And then he'd start noticing that the dog just starts drooling. So at that point, he realized, okay, the dog has been conditioned to drool when that bell rings. All right, so kind of a lot to unpack there. So if you guys got to back up, rewind the video, do whatever you got to do, feel free. All right, so, and down at the bottom, you guys see a YouTube link. Go ahead and click on that, pause, what, pause, pause this video first, click on that, watch the video, and then come back. All right, so, with that video, based on what we talked about today, here's your exit slip. I need you to identify the unconditioned stimulus, the unconditioned response, the conditioned stimulus, and the conditioned response in that video. So go back one more time, watch it again, and then write down in complete sentences what was the unconditioned stimulus, the unconditioned response, the conditioned stimulus, and the conditioned response. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple. So if you guys have any questions, shoot me a comment in the section below or write me an email. If not, see you guys next time.